As much as chemists and especially chemistry teachers love Lewis structures, they aren't perfect in their ability to represent all molecules. They're often the best representation. And since most elements and most atoms and molecules follow our rules, we learn and use and practice that set of rules. The limitations to this are based on things that can't or don't need to complete the octet rule. The first set is anytime you have an, a molecule, excuse me, I was going to say an atom, but a molecule with an odd number of electrons. This can happen for all sorts of different reasons, but when you have an odd number of electrons, obviously it's impossible to pair them all up. If you can't pair them all up, you can't draw a picture in which everything has eight. These molecules tend to be unstable. They're often called free radicals because they've either lost or gained an electron or broken free from something. Um, what would happen there is we would have to just do our best, get the closest to having eight without going over. If an element is has fewer than eight, it's going to be the thing that attracts electrons the least. So out of nitrogen and oxygen, oxygen has a high electronegativity, nitrogen is slightly lower. So that lower electronegativity means that nitrogen is the one that's least likely to fill its octet in our Lewis structure. What we would see with this is you could still have some resonance and that molecule is also very likely to combine or react with another molecule very easily to fill the octet and become more stable. So sometimes these odd numbers are very temporary. The other thing to note is that you definitely, if you end up with an odd number, want to double check is your drawing supposed to be a polyatomic ion? There are a lot of compounds that are polyatomic ions that gain that extra electron. This is nitrogen dioxide. When NO2 gains one more electron and becomes NO2 minus, that is nitrite. And that is a much more stable thing than nitrogen dioxide. So double check to see if there is or should be an extra electron in your drawing. It is possible to have an odd number, and in that case, we do our best, but sometimes, and more often than not, there's actually an extra electron there. Some smaller atoms are stable or stable enough without completely filling their energy level. Boron is the classic example of this. In theory, boron should fill level one and level two with electrons and have a complete set of eight electrons. With most compounds of boron, that does not happen. Boron does not attract electrons well enough for that to occur. Most of the time, boron will end with just six electrons. It has three valence electrons. It shares one, one, one. And with that six, it's as full and stable as it can be. We could note that over here, we have BF3, BF3. This one does have a complete octet on boron and on fluorine, but the formal charges here would show us that boron is more negative, fluorine is more positive. And going beyond that, because fluorine is so electronegative, the fluorine atom is much more likely to pull electrons to itself causing boron to have fewer. This boron to fluorine bond is right at the edge of ionic and polar covalent, which is another thing that kind of points us more towards this. One thing that I failed to mention a little bit here was when we are choosing the right thing on a Lewis structure, we want, and it says it and it shows it, we want atoms to have the electrons that they brought. So formal charges should be zero. Sometimes you'll get into an instance where the formal charge can't be zero. That's when, if there is or has to be an extra electron, that it goes on the thing which is more negative. That's a great example here. Boron has three valence electrons that it brought. It's most likely to have three here rather than the four, which would short fluorine, making boron negative, even though its electronegativity isn't very large, and fluorine positive, 
even though it has the largest electronegativity and a very, very high zap. The last kind of exception is an exception to the octet rule once again. Most elements are full and stable when they fill their S and their P sublevels. Some elements are large enough with a large enough ZEF and a large enough radius that they can hold more than eight electrons. Those are the elements in period three, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, and lower on the periodic table. They can hold more than eight electrons if needed. Um, and the best explanation for that is just the atom and the radius is large enough that it can hold those extra electrons. So it can happen in a lot of different ways. You could have extra bonds, five bonds or six bonds, or you could have double bonds or triple bonds that take us beyond eight or even lone pairs. So xenon as a noble gas, we would see often doesn't bond, but because fluorine's electronegativity is so high, it does want to attract more electrons and can force a fairly unreactive element to bond. It forms a compound like this, but in doing so, we end up with more than eight electrons on xenon. The formal charge is what kind of helps us to prove that this is possible and likely. Phosphorus has five valence electrons, so it is possible and, in fact, stable for it to form five bonds. Sulfur has six valence electrons, which is why it's possible to share each of those six in a single bond and make a stable compound as long as it's with an element that has a high enough electronegativity that it really wants those electrons a lot. So very often in our expanded sets here, we would be looking at something bonded to halogens or something bonded to oxygen. But what's most important is that this can't always happen. It only happens with our largest atoms. So row three, silicon, phosphorus, um, sulfur, and chlorine, and larger.